Geek Seekers, I'm Nick. We get lots of emails from companies wanting to send us stuff all the time, most of which, to be honest, isn't really relevant to what we do here on the channel. Sometimes, though, we get one of those emails and it's something that really, really stands out to us. And that's exactly what happened when Marsback reached out and asked if we wanted to check out their new keyboard, this one, the Marsback M1. Now, this is a Kickstarter project, but even though it is Kickstarter, I thought it was interesting enough to take a look at because it's wireless, 75%, hot swap switches, polycarbonate body, and it's got RGB illumination. So you guys can already see why I said yes to this thing. So let's dive in. I wanna preface this video by saying that Marsback didn't pay us a cent for this video. Basically what happened was they sent us an email, I saw photos and I was properly interested because on paper, this keyboard looks really, really good. Now, this keyboard, I have to admit, is also a working prototype. This is not the final version of the Marsback M1. And I wanted to mention that I actually know quite a bit about keyboards, but I'm actually more into good off the shelf solutions and not really into the custom keyboard scene. And the reason for me not being into it is basically just time. I don't have lots of it. So please forgive me in advance if I say something wrong and be nice because yeah, I'm not like the custom keyboard guy. Overall, the design and construction is really solid. The keyboard itself weighs around 950 grams. It's 131 millimeters wide, 321 millimeters long, and around 43 millimeters high. Overall, it's a pretty standard sized 75% deck. The keyboard feels quite dense and when you pick it up, it feels really heavy. You could actually probably use this as a weapon if you really wanted to. The included cable is a USB type A to type C cable and it can be used to either charge the M1 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which should take around six hours from dead flat to charge, or to use as a wide keyboard. Uh, this kind of makes sense because on the back of the keyboard, it's got a center aligned USB type C port for that use specifically. The Marsback M1 has per key RGB lighting as well as 21 other RGB LEDs in the body that provide the additional illumination through the whole polycarbonate body. All the lighting can be controlled through the Marsback Pro software package and I'll come back to that in a little bit. In the box you'll find a key pulling and removal tool and additional key caps to change the alt keys to option keys and the windows or the super keys to command keys if you're using this with macOS. I hope that wasn't too confusing but be aware though this is an early pre-production prototype, so the production version might include different things. I think it's actually gonna include more things than this one. The top side of the deck is made from what I can tell is also polycarbonate, and there's zero deck flex when you're really giving the M1 a properly good beating. The form factor of the M1 is pretty nice too. As I mentioned already a bit earlier in the video, it's 321 millimeters long this way and 131 millimeters deep this way and the spacing between the keys is quite nice and the ergonomics of the function key row feels pretty well thought out and when you're touch typing you can really feel where that function row is because it's slightly lower than the number row. The Marsback M1 is excellent to type on. I had my doubts at first given Marsback apparently created three of their own mechanical optical switches for the M1 and since I'd never used any of them before it was hard to tell if they'd be any good so I was pretty pleasantly surprised when they felt really nice. The truth is, I don't know which of the three hours is since uh, they are three different types of linear switches, or but I actually think they're a mix of all three switches on the same deck. But if you're interested, they come in those three flavors. There's a 42G version, a 50G version, and a 55G version. All of the switches have the same four millimeter travel distance and all have an actuation distance of around 0.6 millimeters for a registered key press. I also wanted to mention, before I forget, if you guys know anything more about these switches that I don't know, I'd love to hear more from you in the comments. I know for a fact uh, there will be people that will know way more about these switches specifically than me. So yeah, go crazy in the comments and I'm, I wanna learn some more about these switches. 
The key caps come in three different styles as well. The PBT caps, they come in a dark set, which is the one that we have here, although I don't think these ones are PBT. These ones are kind of like the Keychron ones, they resemble that look. There's also a white version that they've got too, and a pink version. And I reckon the pink one would look pretty sweet as well. I reckon that would look pretty sick. I might get some pink ones too. And yeah, when I was uh, getting the emails back and forth with them, it was kind of a toss up between this darker style or if I went with the pink style, but you know, I, Claire said the pink, I said these, and yeah, I'm the boss. Right, Claire? <laughs> it's got a few other tricks up its sleeve too. That frosted polycarbonate body is pretty legit looking. The thing is though, that's the thing that really drew me towards this keyboard. 75% decks with hot swap switches are a dime a dozen, and seeing something that also looks quite unique and individual usually gets my attention pretty quickly. Here's why. When you buy a keyboard, you're usually buying it to suit your typing and gaming style, the features that you want, and a style to suit your current or your planned setup. And here's where the M1 excels. If you turn the lighting off, you've got yourself a white keyboard. If it's not white enough, change the lighting to white and change the brightness. If you've got a red or a blue or a green or any of the other 16.8 million colors as your primary color for your setup, you can change the keyboard to suit any of those situations as well. The only limitation here is if you have a black setup and this, here's a suggestion for Mars back for the M2, a dark frosted polycarbonate body would be sick. And I know this can be done because you've seen it in plenty of other products for like the past 30 years. As far as battery life, it's, it's pretty hard to say. They're claiming between 35 to 40 days with no illumination. But as far as I can tell, it really depends on the lighting or the pattern or the brightness. And yeah, it's pretty hard to say for sure. Uh, but to put this into perspective, I wrote this whole script on this keyboard. I've gamed on this keyboard for the last week or so, and I haven't plugged it in for anything except right now. So yeah, it's hard to say. When the production version drops, uh, we'll do an update on this. I'm gonna try and get a production version of this too to see what the differences are. The software for now is pretty rudimentary, but it does allow you to customize almost everything already. The programming studio allows you to program all the macros and that kind of stuff, but there's not really enough time in this video to dive into this because yeah, it's the same as most other custom keyboards for customization here. You've got lighting effects section that allows you to configure the lighting in different zones or per key. It also allows you to individually control the lighting in the body itself. There are some really cool effects here like a music visualizer, but again, the software needs a little bit of refining. Over time, I can see this becoming really powerful and I think it's a pretty good start, but I'm not gonna trash this. You can do basically everything in it. It just needs a little improvement for the user experience. So it's, overall, it's not horrible, but it's not the best. The thing that really makes the Marsback M1 stand out to me though, is the fact that it's wireless, it looks good, and it seems to me that they did their research when it comes to doing things that custom keyboard lovers like. One of the most common things we see in our keyboard content is people saying that they wished whatever keyboard we're looking at had hot swappable switches. And it seems as though Mars back was listening. You have to remember though, they're really pushing the this M1 right here as an off the shelf solution, but it's got something for everyone. And I honestly think that based on this prototype alone, they'll probably deliver on that promise. The other thing is though, just take a look at the Kickstarter project for yourself. It's been funded, they're actively engaging with the community and they're taking suggestions. Now, about my experience with this thing for using this keyboard for my purposes, because some of you guys out there might look for a keyboard for the same thing. For me, it's mainly content creation. Uh, the M1's usable, but the only thing that I'm missing here is the numpad because I have all of my other things mapped to it. But again, if you're buying this keyboard, you're not buying it because it doesn't have a numpad. You, you know what you're getting yourself into. For gaming, this keyboard is also pretty spot on. I didn't feel like it impacted my playstyle or my ability to be really bad at FPS games. So there you go. I also wanted to mention that if you're using the M1 with a KVM, you shouldn't have any issues with it either. That's the primary way that I tested it and it worked fine. And the Marsback Pro software also works through the KVM as well. So I can confirm that. What are my final thoughts on the Marsback M1? Well, to be honest, 
I really like this thing, even though it's just a prototype of the final version and I'm going to come out and say it and there's going to be people that are definitely going to disagree with me because you know, the internet, but I think Mars back have nailed this keyboard. The design is unique enough to make it individual. It's great to type on. Ergonomically, it's spot on. The software needs a bit of work, but from what I can see with their community engagement, they're actually rewriting the software as I am filming this video. Overall, I really hope for the community's sake that they deliver this keyboard, because if the final product is anything like this prototype, I'm gonna have to recommend it. Simple as that. Uh, no, that's not the end of it though, like even though this is a Kickstarter, I, I can see this leading into great things for Mars back too. The stretch goals to support cherry switches for like hot swappable switches is nice too. I don't think the asking price is too much because as of filming this video, they've still got some of the 165 US dollar pledges left. And that includes everything that I showed in this video as well as some dark ABS key caps and some white pudding PVT caps as well. The thing is, if you're interested in grabbing it at those prices, I'd probably check it out ASAP. Now, it's looking like they'll be ready to ship in July, but I mean, it's Kickstarter, who knows? And also with how 2021's already been going and also with a ship that is stuck sideways in the Suez Canal, it's pretty hard to say. But let us know what you think about the Mars Vac M1. You already know how I feel about this thing. It's, uh, it's a really interesting keyboard. The prototype feels pretty spot on, but yeah, let's hope they actually deliver on time. There's a link to the campaign in the description and the pin comment on the video as well if you want to check this out for yourself. But again, I, I, I like it. I like it. I don't, I know people are going to disagree with me, but you know, that's just, that's just the internet basically. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And oh, just before I forget, one last suggestion to Mars back if you guys watch this video. I saw some people talking about this on the community thing on Kickstarter. Please open source the API and the software and help the community develop a Linux version or you guys can in-house develop a Linux version of the software of for Mars back Pro. I think that would be an absolute game changer if you could really help out the open source community. They need a great open source keyboard. This could be it. That's what I reckon. Thanks for watching.